but this is this is part of the course of Donald Trump. This is who he is. This is uh, what he is. Um, I think much more concerning than uh, than actual Fourth of July parade has been Donald Trump's cozy relationship with uh, with uh, the murderous dictator, who I never call by name, by the way, because I don't think he deserves that kind of respect. The murderous dictator of North Korea, uh, the floundering kind of non-strategy in Iran, the, the, the actual policies and the actual presentation of, uh, of the presidency by Donald Trump is what really scares me and upsets me. There was this beautiful um, video of this North Korean dissident, this girl who managed to escape North Korea at a massive cost to herself and to her family. And, uh, you know, she said it like it is. She said, what message is Donald Trump sending the North Korean people who are being enslaved, who are being tortured, who are being uh, raped, pillaged, murdered by this regime? What message of hope is he sending them? He's, he's basically telling them, oh no, your, your ruler is just like any other ruler, your dictator is just like any other dictator, just like any other political leader out there in the world. I'm going to treat you with respect. I'm not going to fight for you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even morally fight for you. I'm, I'm not advocating for the United States fighting for the people of North Korea. But morally, uh, what, is this, what does this mean when America sanctions the kind of evil that Donald Trump has been sanctioning in his relationship with the North Korean brutal, murderous uh, dictator. You know, shaking hands with him, hugging him, calling him as he's got a love thing going on, and then and then walking into North Korea as if it's any other country, as if it's any just another border, it's just it's just another regime. Uh, the message he sends the North Koreans, the message he sends any oppressed people in the world is that America. Is, is nothing, that America is meaningless. And, uh, and America will not stand with them, that America is no longer th that beacon, not, a f not fighting for their freedom, but a beacon, a beacon, uh, you know, for, uh, for freedom, that that is long past, that is gone, and America will not, does not actually stand uh, for their freedom. That is, you know, that is a, a um, that is a, that is a real travesty and a real, and it's 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 not that it's not that other presidents have been significantly better about this, but Donald Trump has taken it to the next level. Donald Trump is is in this sense uh, more deflating of America's value. I mean, everybody criticized Obama for America not leading, and they criticized Obama for kind of moral equivalence between America and other nations. They criticized Obama for bowing to the Saudi prince. You know, everybody went after Obama for not being a, a, a real leader, a real defender of American principles. Well, I mean, Donald Trump is doing Obama ten times better with his uh, with his groveling before the um, you know before the murderous dictator of uh, of North Korea. This is a, a this is the, the the lowest I think. Um, American foreign policy has sunk in terms of abandoning the idea of the value of liberty and the value of freedom to people around the world. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to understand the people who, uh, you know, who are defending this. And, and there are plenty of them and there are plenty of people who listen to the show that have been defending, oh, this is the best alternative because this, uh, this beats going to war. Why is war an alternative to this? was not an alternative to this. You can shun this, uh, this, this brutal dictator and still not go to war with him. Indeed, North Korea doesn't want war. This guy doesn't want to commit suicide. He doesn't want to die. Um, he is, uh, you know, he's just a thug. He's just a thug. And to treat him like anything else is, uh, is a great travesty. Uh, uh, many people say, you know, this is just like uh, Nixon going to China. In many respects, it is just like Nixon going to China. And Nixon going to China was a true travesty. I'm actually right now trying to find uh, this quote from Ayn Rand uh, where she, uh, uh, she wrote about, uh, you know, Nixon going to China and, and what, that, what that represented and what that meant. And, um, 
you know, and she thought it was an abomination. And and she wrote very eloquently. That's why I'm trying to find it because because I think it was so. It was a it was a powerful statement of the United States basically abandoning the principles, the abandoning the the the, the principles on which it stands, abandoning what it represents in the world, and um, and what this meant for people in countries that are striving towards freedom, and what this meant when when the United States. Abandons them, you know, is is completely, is completely, uh, is completely gone. So anyway, I, I can't find it. So um, if if I find it in a little while, I'll read you that quote. Um, so you know, I think this is a particular sad time uh, for America. It's a particularly sad time for America. It's a particularly sad time uh, to be celebrating the Fourth of July with a president who has no, I mean, no understanding of what this country really stands for. And we'll get to that in a minute. But here is the quote from Ayn Rand. Uh, this is what she wrote about Nixon in China. Quote, Morally, it was impossible to watch all those gracious ceremonies, benevolent smiles, lengthy handshakes, cordial speeches, and hold in mind the actual nature of Red China when kept alternating between two feelings, the kind of unreality and childish amusement one feels at a circus, and the shock of returning to reality, the reality of China's terror, starvation, torture chambers, mass slaughter. I kept thinking of the thousands of men who tried to escape from China by swimming many miles under the gunfire of patrol boats to reach freedom in Hong Kong. What about them? I kept thinking. Whenever somebody uttered one of those ringing speeches about universal peace and love for mankind, isn't there anyone to defend them? The shock came from the realization that the smiling figure in the midst of the ghastly pretense on the TV screen was the President of the United States. It is America that all the enslaved peoples of the world look up to as the symbol of freedom and as their last hope. For the Chinese to see an American president drinking toasts to their jailers is so cruel a blow that in the name of humanity, no one should ever permit himself to deliver it. Now, that's Ayn Rand at her finest. That's Ayn Rand at her beautiful, beautifully articulated. I could have never said it any better but th that is there is no different between that and what we are witnessing right now in the case of North Korea now some have said but 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 Nixon led to the opening up of China and to all these Chinese being freer today well no he did not his trip was never necessary for that China was not opened up China was not freed up until Mao Zedong was dead deep in a grave and only then China was freed up somewhat. And that freedom was not a result of America opening up. It was a result of the pragmatism, the, 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 the brutal, unwavering, brutal pragmatism of Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping was a, was a bad man, but when it came, when it came to, to, to freeing up his country in the name of pragmatic economic reform, he did it because he saw it worked. He's also the man responsible for the slaughter in Tiananmen Square. So he's no hero of freedom. So no, Nixon's gesture did not bring freedom to the Chinese people. Nixon's gesture did not create economic progress. Nixon's gesture was just a sheer, unequivocal, unmitigated betrayal, betrayal of those in countries like China and North Korea who still strive for freedom, who still look up, who still dream of escaping, as was articulated by that brave young girl who, uh, who criticized uh, President Trump for his meeting. Free. China, as I said, is a brutal, evil regime, but it is not a communist regime. It's an authoritarian regime. It is far closer to fascism than communism, but it is neither fascist nor communist. 
it is a different type of authoritarianism. Nothing has to necessarily fit into neat little boxes like left and right, this tribe or that tribe. There are new forms of authoritarianism. And China has created one. It keeps the Chinese Communist Party label because it is a convenient label and because it would like to rewrite history and present Mao Zedong as a hero and the Communist Party as good. But... <laughs> But there was no communism in China. There are no communists in China. There is a market, to a large extent, a market economy, at least in vast segments of the Chinese economy, are, are relatively unregulated, relatively free, relatively low taxed. The welfare state in China is actually smaller than the welfare state in the United States, smaller than the welfare state in Europe. So no, trading with China is not like sanctioning a regime, a brutal regime, where there is a single dictator who rules over everything, where there is no economic freedom, no political freedom, no freedom to travel, no freedom to enter, no freedom to leave, where you're shot at the border. That is the border, by the way, that Donald Trump crossed, a border that if any North Korean was going in the other direction, they would be shot. That is not a border one recognizes. That is not a border one crosses in a friendly gesture. It is hard, I, I, and I don't know what to do to convey to you the extent of the evil that that represents. I read the quote from Ayn Rand. I mean, to me, if that does not convince, I don't know what does. But uh, his whole, Donald Trump's whole relationship with the murderous dictator of North Korea and the is 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 a is representative of of his absolute unmitigated pragmatism anti freedom anti principles attitude and the fact that so many people so many people who would have called themselves pro american who still call themselves pro american support the president in this action i see it on facebook is is uh, is truly truly scary, ominous for our future, and ominous in terms of the understanding that Americans today have of what it means to be an American and what America actually, um, actually uh, represents. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.